Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. What a beautiful day the Lord has made for us. Does anybody know what today is? Launch day. That is right. The Global Methodist Church launches today. What an amazing, amazing future it offers for us. We will be able to contend for the Bible and boldly contend for our Lord and Savior. So I'm going to ask you to rise, if you would, so we can all enjoy our songs. Sing along. needing to sit down and rest, I assume, Bear. <laughs> you may be seated. So good to see you, and I'm so glad that Elizabeth mentioned about the Global Methodist Church. We also have one, at least one today, um, United Methodist Church Bishop turned in his credentials and will be the first bishop that we have in the Global Methodist Church. <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. Some of the um, actual whole conferences uh, around our country, a couple of them will be joining. 
uh, coming in June. So we're real excited about that. Let's take a moment in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. This is an exciting day. May the 1st. It's hard to believe we're already at this place in our life. We ask that your Holy Spirit would guide us and lead us and convict us. Holy Ghost, get a hold of us like never before. Yeah. Fill us, Lord, like never before. May we only do your will, your will, your will. Now, Lord, what is your will? <laughs> what is your will, Lord Jesus? Oh, we're so excited about the Global Methodist Church, and we're moving in that direction. We thank you for that one bishop, and we pray others that have that kind of heart. And only those that have that kind of heart will move forward. And may all of God's people say, Amen. 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 I need any of the children that are here, if they'll come up front. I know some are always in front. That was not Andy's fault. I'll let it go at that. Thank you, Linda. All right, now everybody, the hands up in the air and say, long, long, long time ago in a faraway place on the Wiflacoochee River. Reverend Bullywink, Bullfrog, what's a bullfrog do? Dominic, you got it down pat, my man. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Dominic, I'm going to get you some garnet and gold shoes, though, for next week, okay? Nah, they're Spider-Man shoes. I like those. They look good. Well, let me just talk to you about Bullywink Bullfrog. He was talking about a verse in the Bible, Bible that says, How beautiful are the feet of him who brings good news. Look at your feet for a minute. Aren't they beautiful? Look at those different shoes you have. Ooh, they look nice. I know. I like yours. Your Spider-Man shoes. I know he saved a city. Exactly. He's kind of like Jesus saving us, right? <laughs> Wow, that was good. That's a, good, that was a prophetic word there. Jesus is like Spider-Man. Amen? I like that. Sticks to you. Well, I can do a sermon on that. Goodness, Dominic. Good, good. But we got to go on. So that Bible verse says, how beautiful are the feet of him who brings good news. Bullywink was saying, you know, long, long, long time ago, he said people didn't have cell phones. They didn't have telephones. No. What did, you know how they got the message to other people? How do you think they did it? No? Don't know? They had runners. They had runners that would take a message, really. That's before they had all what we call technology today. And they would run, and that's why that Bible verse says, How beautiful are the feet of him who brings good news. So when little Taddy, who Bullywink was when he was a child, got saved, saved from the old gator. Remember the gator? Gator chomp. Any gator chompers out there? Yeah, yeah, I see. And I, I know you're getting too excited about the gator chomp, Dominic. That's all right. That's all right. Well, you know, with Bullywink being saved that way, he wanted to get the word out to everybody, and so they wanted a runner. So a couple volunteered. First was Sister Snail, but she moved too slow. You know, a little snail, that's not going to work, is it? No. So then Silly Centipede tried it and has a whole bunch of little feet, but by my being so tiny, it took forever to move. So that's not going to work. So you know who ended up being the runner? Squirrely Girly. And she ran all over, and she could tell everybody the good news. That's what the word gospel means, good news, that Bullywink had gotten saved. And that's why he started the Bullywink Bullfrog Church when he was a little tatty. That was just absolutely amazing. And she began to run for everybody, and it wore out her little claws, so they got her little tennis shoes, kind of like your tennis shoes that some of y'all have on, okay? Some of these tennis shoes. And she, well, you know what? She didn't wear socks. I see some of you wore socks. Yeah, exactly. Well, and you know, if you don't wear socks, what can happen? Right? What would you say? 
Get stinky, exactly, exactly. So it was stinky, so they had to get uh, uh, socks for a squirrely girly, and it was much better after that. And she continued to be their runner to spread the good news that Bullywink got saved, that Jesus had changed his life. How beautiful are you? Do you know you're beautiful? I love to hug myself. I believe Jesus is hugging me. Can you hug yourself for a minute? Congregation, can you join us? Lord Jesus, we know that you love us because we are beautiful in your sight. In your name we pray. Amen. Ethan, I'm going to give you the candy. We pray for the teachers. We'll see you back for communion. Congregation, stand up, turn around, and greet one another for a minute before our welcome and announcements. you got to sit back down. Take your bulletin, if you will. We'd like to welcome all the visitors today. We'd also like to say hi to all those that are online watching us. You're part of our family always, and we appreciate that. Also, if you're a first-time visitor, this is your first time in this church, we offer a very, very warm welcome to you. Sit back, relax. And when you, the service is over, you can go through the lobby, out the door to your right, and there's a welcome center. Please pick up your free gift at the welcome center. Check your bulletins because we're putting quite a bit in them this time. We have a note that starting on May 15th, there will be some slight changes to the Sunday services that the worship committee has been discussing. As you know, the Global Methodist Church launched today, and that is the, the denomination that we are planning to join. This Saturday, will be a report on that with many great speakers and leaders of this movement. You can still sign up for that simulcast out in the lobby. Another shout out to the Rock the Church that we had last weekend. The Scouts, the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts raised over $400 in profit for their camp adventures, so great job to the Scouts. Our backpack ministry, to help feed our local children through the schools, which we call Change for Change, the total was $161.50 last Sunday. If you notice in your pews, those red, fo red folders about this big by this big, they're the ones you sometimes wave when it gets a little too hot in here. Please sign that for our regular visitors, or if you're even a guest, you can sign it. And sign it and pass it down to the end of the pew. Would you please ride, rise for the reading of the scripture? Today's scripture comes from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 3. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters... I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Turn the bulletin over, if you will, for our prayer concerns. We used a variety of scriptures over the weekend with the men, and we have uh, our two different speakers speaking today. Uh, today at this service, we have Brother Dale Burns in a few minutes for the message, and then Mike uh, Neidhart is going to be speaking at the 1115 service. So that was the Old Testament passage, and I know Brother Dale's going to be lifting up a variety of scriptures and focusing on the New Testament as well. So with our prayer concerns... Um, I don't know how many are in here today, but when we had Rock the Church, we consecrated our uh, new Stephen ministers. And so if they're in here today, many of you may not have seen them. I just want to recognize them. If Judy and uh, Joanne and Tom are in here, would y'all stand for just a minute? Any of you that are here? Let's, there you go. There's Tom. Let's, well, there you go. Praise the Lord. Welcome. 
Welcome, and we are so excited about the Stephen ministry, and Brother Frank is back. Uh, he suffered through a trip, he and his dear wife, to Europe, and uh, we all, uh, Robbie and I were talking about we were weeping for him and crying for him having to take such a trip to Europe, you know, and, but he said that he had a good time, you know, he and his dear wife, and uh, he had a great time, obviously, and uh, he is in that program as well, and is going to be one of our Stephen leaders, and there'll be a consecration service coming up also. Miss Betty Collins is still with us, and we just need to really pray uh, for her family. Uh, last weekend, the doctors felt she would go on to be with the Lord. So you can imagine how difficult that has been for everyone, the family. We want to continue to remember Paul Fata. He is home from the hospital. Uh, we want to be in prayer for June Austin. She, uh, one of the dear uh, women of our church, had a bad fall, fractured her, her wrist twice, double fracture, and a lot of bruises. So let's keep her in our prayers, if you will. Those having surgery coming up this week, Lori uh, is having surgery on May the 4th. We want to be in prayer for her. Uh, Carolyn uh, Tessier has surgery on May the 6th, and Carolyn and Jerry's 65th wedding anniversary <laughs> is this weekend, and that's why we have these beautiful flowers. They'll be at the 11 o'clock service, and so we want to be in prayer for her also. Sherry Woodstuff and John asked us to be in prayer for their nephew, Alan. Alan uh, is only 49 years old, been taken to the ICU, and uh, he's been spitting up blood. He has a certain type of pneumonia, just really critical, so we want to <coughs> excuse me, be in prayer for him. Barbara Trent uh, is uh, in the hospital up north. Uh, we also, uh, Don Paradine called me yesterday. Some of you remember years ago, Don and Pat Paradine. Pat was one of the beginning uh, folks that worked with Charlotte for our prayer quilt ministry. Well, she went on to heaven on Tuesday, and Don just wanted to let us know. So we want to keep that family in our prayers. And then I want to encourage all of you to be looking out for a, a video I'm going to be sending out, going to make it this afternoon. Uh, it's going to touch on, uh, to begin with, the uh, wonderful news of the Global Methodist Church and the expansion and some uh, different new creative ideas uh, that we have and give you a chance to uh, do some discussing and to learn about it and then to, to bring it back to your pastor and share your thoughts. So be on the lookout for that video. That'll be great for, uh, to hear your word about that. I think that concludes my prayer concerns. I know there's always others, and you can fill out your prayer cards, drop them in the offering plates uh, when you exit today, and we'll make sure they get on our email prayer chain. I'm going to ask Brother Bobby if you will lead us to the Lord in prayer. Good morning. Hey, good to see all of you. I'd like to welcome all of you in the house of the Lord once again and also like to thank those that are tuning in online uh, worshiping with us today I'd like to reiterate also those names that Pastor Eddie lifted up and I like to add I see Jonathan from Malachua is in our presence he's been one that we've been praying for so good to see our brother from Malachua travel up to be in our midst today so good to see you. And uh, I saw Miss Miss Gillette come in on the wheelchair that I loaned her. Now I need that back after the service. Uh, Miss Gillette, we're so glad to, to see you in our, in our midst today. May God continue to strengthen us. Again, our altar is open. It's just a, a pleasant to be in God's presence today on a first Sunday of communion, to partake in our Heavenly Father's body of Christ that he's, he's given us, and I'm so grateful to be uh, here today. As Andy plays softly, um, our altar is always open for you to come and, uh, and cast your cares upon the Lord. The Bible tells us by his stripes we are healed. And we're so grateful. So we're going to go to our Heavenly Father as we bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come today following to a place where you allowed us to wake up this morning. Father, you started us on our way, still in our right mind. Father, with our health and strength, we come to give praise and thanks to you. You're the one that we turn to when we can't turn anywhere else. 
Father, you're the one that we look to. When things are falling, we look to you. Father, you allowed us to, to cast all our cares upon you today, and we're grateful. Father, we thank you for all that are gathered here. Your children come to give back a portion of what you've given us. Father, we thank you for allowing us to wake up with our health and our strength this morning, making old death behave. Father, we know we're here because of you. You're not done with us yet. And Father, we're not done with you. We're going to continue to lift you up in praise and adoration today. Look on us. Be with us with those names that Pastor Eddie lifted up. Father, you created them in your image. You know them by name. Father, you allowed them to call on you in time of need. And right now, Father, they need you. We need you to be in our midst today. Father, we need you for our guidance, guide our footsteps. Father, so we'll walk in a way that when they look at us, they see you. Father, we're representing our Heavenly Father that too wise to make a mistake. Oh, and Father, we know you're too just to do wrong. So we're here all because of you, allowing us once again to give you some praise, once again to give you some glory. And Father, I feel you today. We ought to put our hands together and give him some praise because we know, Father, you're worthy to be praised. Father, our creator and the author and the finish of our faith. Father, I want to say a special prayer for Miss Betty. She's weighed heavily on me in the last day or two. Father, she's there looking to the hills. Father, she's calling on a God that hears her cry. Father, let her transition be like no other. Father, we know you're going to take her out of the hole and give her a new life. Father, give her a new body. They are free from sickness and give her a new body that needs no doctors anymore. Father, we know you're going to give her a seat at the table. You're going to welcome her home with open arms, saying, well done, good and faithful servant. Father, remember her family as they make the adjustments, Father, and their preparedness for her departure. But Father, we know she's not going until you're ready. She's not going until you're ready. And we say amen today. Father, we thank you for the Woodstuff family. Father, him that having difficulty with lungs. Only you, Father, can clear the way and give him a new beginning. Father, we, we claim in victory for him today. And Father, the one that has fallen, Miss June. Father, I can see her as she comes in the north that she welcomes me as it my first time here. <laughs> Father, give her the strength to stand once again. Father, let her stand on her own. Come back, Father, with a testimony that how he strengthened me in my time of need. And Father, I say thank you for Miss June today, allowing me to stand in the gap for someone that can stand for themselves. And Father, look on our church, our leaders. Father, what a praise report that for someone to turn it in, that's not on our page. But Father, we thank you today for our guidance, for our leadership in our pastor today as we move forward. Father, help us to put our feet on higher ground because this church, Father, we know we're standing on the truth. And we say thank you for that today. And Father, as our praise team come, Father, remember the families that we lifted up, our pastor and his family, as we continue to worship and honor you. Father, we're going to give you the praise and the glory. And may all of God's people say, Amen. That's powerful. 
Let's all rise together. On Communion Sunday, we just do one song, so if you come to the altar, you probably want to come up right away and pray, and you'll have an opportunity to come again to when you have communion at the close of the service, but we would love for you to come up and pray. I see Miss Irene there to pray and Miss Patty, so if you need to be anointed with oil, they're right there for you. beautiful one. Father, we adore you. We thank you for your mercy and your grace in this place. Father, look on our, our speaker today. Let the words be comforting for those that need comforting. Let the words be inspiring for someone that needs inspiring today. Father, let our cup truly be runneth over with the message and all God's people say. Amen. We just received an announcement right before the service from our United Methodist women 
Uh, they have their annual Celebrate Women Luncheon, May the 21st. And since we're the first Sunday in May, we want to get that word out. And you can sign up at the Welcome Center as well. Their speakers will be Ms. Dot Chadwick and Karen Hotz. Karen is also a missionary and travels. Just got back from Egypt. Uh, so we're excited that she's on our mission committee right here at our church. So I know that'll be a great day. So, uh, dear ladies, I assume it's for the ladies. It said celebrate women. If there's chicken wings, I'll be there. But uh, um, we want you to uh, be and sign up and come and join us there. Uh, let me also mention what a great men's retreat we had. Oh, my goodness, it was fantastic. Uh, it's our fifth one we've done ourselves. The last two have been in-house here. Uh, we've done them at the Leesburg Retreat Center as well. And I know a lot of guys can't fit those schedules in uh, with their work. Um, but the ones that were able to be there, we had about 27, and it was just amazing. Our two speakers were Brother Dale Burns and Brother Mike uh, Nyhart. And as I mentioned, they're going to be speaking. Uh, and uh, in a few minutes, Dale's going to come up and share, and then we'll have Holy Communion. I do want to mention there's some food left over. Now, I took a whole bunch home last night, as a bunch of us did, uh, but we bought uh, too many bananas, and I understand there's some cookies over there, and these are fresh, good, crispy bananas. So if you want some, I'm sure they'll be gone after this service, but stop by the Friendship Hall, and I know they would love for you to have them. I think there's some other goodies over there as well. Amen? Amen. Amen. That don't sound real hearty, you know. Amen. That's better. Yeah, bananas. Come on now. Well, I want you to welcome Brother Dale Burns to give our message today. Brother Dale. I'm reminded often that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. So Johnny is such a uh, merry heart person. I wanted him to come up and share with you. Come right on up. I wanted him to share with you uh, something that will make you laugh at least once or twice. Go ahead. Thank you. By the way, there's no more bananas. <laughs> See, Eddie did this at the first service, and they cleaned them out over there. <laughs> uh, we had a great men's retreat for the past two days over here in Friendship Hall, and... Um, One of the, we talked a lot about several things, but we learned how to evangelize to other people. And we learned some of the small things that men could do to, so that other people could look at us and they could see Jesus in us. And it was a super retreat. Um, but it wasn't all serious. We did a whole lot of laughing. Some of us told uh, clean jokes, and then there was other things that happened during the thing that we laughed about continuously. Um, <laughs> you know, when Lynn and I were, um, they, well, let me say this first. Laughter probably is the best mental medicine you can probably ever take. And Lynn and I, when we were in high school, she had a very unique laugh, and I could tell that laugh anywhere, and I me memorized that sound, and I could locate her anywhere with that <laughs> laugh. Um, and we've been uh, doing that, laughing and having fun for the past 58 years. Uh, now, when Jennifer came along, she got a double dose of this. And she will laugh until she loses her breath. I thought we were going to have to give her CPR a couple of times. <laughs> um, and God, you know, God has a sense of humor, too. Just look at the top of me and uh, Reverend Eddie's head. You know, I don't know why I thought that was so funny, but I, I guess it did. Um, Okay, well, Dale asked me, he said, you know, we need to get people laughing. He said, can you find a joke that goes along with my sermon? And I, I said, well, I'll try, but I didn't find one. <laughs> so I'm just going to just pick one. When me and my brother were growing up, my dad was the kind of dad that no matter what happened, you could break your leg, you could hurt your ankle, you could step on a nail that went all the way through your foot, you could have a bloody nose from playing basketball, always had the same comment, walk it off. 
but he, you know, one thing, three little words we never shared was, was I love you, you know? And so we kept, time went by, and finally one day I said, I love you, Dad. He said, I love you too, son. And from that time on, we always exchanged that, when those three little words, when we were departing, I was going home and he was staying there. But well, one time he got pretty sick and I, I was kind of worried about him, you know? And so uh, I was fixing to go and uh, little tears in my eyes and I leaned down to his ears and I thought, well, I, am I gonna be able to get these three little words out? And so I cut my hands over his ears and I said, Dad, walk it off. <laughs> <laughs> Walk it off. I like that. My, oh, my. Only coach could pull that off. Well, after the introduction, after the prayer, I almost want to break out in a dance, but with two false knees, I'm not sure how well that would go over up here. So I want us just to take a moment and think about a couple things. One is a merry heart, do it good like a medicine. Laughter is medicine. God gave that to us. And I am amazed at the day and time we live in when so few people are able to laugh. It really kind of takes me aback. So let me share right along with what we were talking about, beautiful feet, those that bring the message. Paul is in, in prison for a second time. He's getting ready. He knows the end is here. If you serve God long enough, God kind of lets you know what's coming. Some call it intuition. I call it the Holy Ghost. Amen. So Paul knew, and he knew that Timothy was going to be the spearhead for the gospel throughout the known world at that time. So he knew he had to tell him one more time just what his responsibilities were and how much he loved him. You know, the greatest thing you'll ever have or I'll ever have in my life is when a man of God tells you they love you. Why? Because they're bringing the message of God through a vessel that has prayed and has spent time with God. This is what the scriptures say that really touched me. And then I want to take a few seconds and just read a few more scriptures. It's in Timothy chapter 1. He says, I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience. I love that, pure conscience. That without ceasing, I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. How'd you like to have a man of God praying for you night and day? That's what this church, this body of believers offers us. That's why I brought myself here, my wife here, and my family here. Anytime we go to a new neighborhood, I check it out, and I find a place that knows how to pray. This church with its prayer cloths, its, its bears, its, there's so many ways that we offer prayers, and that is important. Prayer is important. I'm probably preaching to the choir, and I apologize. I'm sure you're a prayer, or you wouldn't be in here. So, whoops. <laughs> At least I put them around my neck this time. Okay. Greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigning faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. In other words, I'm confident that you're the man. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee, by the putting on 
of my hand. Greatest gift you'll have is when a man of God puts his hands on you or a man or a woman of God put their hands on you. And if they anoint and put their hands on you, it'll be the greatest gift you can get in this life. We, according to God, we got much greater ones coming, but that's a great gift. And he goes on to say, for God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Where does power come from? A joyful heart doeth good like a medicine. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Let's go on. This is what our world, a little bit of what our world is suffering from today. I don't know if any of you have ever been in politics. God was gracious enough to let me do it for almost three years, and thank you very much, God. Um, but we're fighting a battle, guys. There is a battle going on, and if you serve God, people will assassinate your character. They will say things that are incredible. It's almost like listening to a fairy tale when you hear it and you know it's about you. Circumstances. One of the things we run in today almost daily are circumstances. And this is what the book of Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says. Be anxious for nothing. Circumstances create anxiety in a lot of people, me included. But in everything by prayer, Paul talks about that, and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasseth all understanding, will guard your circumstances, can rob your faith can rob your joy, can rob your strength, will guard your heart and your, your minds through Christ Jesus. Let me give you an example. Let me give you a worldly example. All the great battles in history were won in the general's tent. They were not won on the battlefield. They're not won out there in your circumstances. They're won in the general's tent. And our general is Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost. People that, like Paul said, I pray for you in the morning, and I pray for you at night. I'm not sure what's falling off of me here. You get to be my age, a lot of things fall off. It's kind of funny. Maybe. If it's not you, it is funny. <laughs> So, remember, General's Tent. I got a great example of this. Some years ago, my brother and his wife decided they were going to have a baby at home. So, they're having a baby at home, and here comes my brother running in. Oh, my God, Dale, we got to pray. I'm like, wait a minute. Your wife's having a baby, and we're going to pray now? What were you doing when I told you to come pray three months ago? He was busy. He'd get around to it. You cannot pray in the middle of the battle. Can you pray in the middle of the battle? Absolutely. I've done it a number of times. Does it work? No, I promise. Cross my heart and hope to die. It does not work. General's tent. Circumstance. Let's go to the next one. I'm talking about some of the things that you and I run against and whether you're aware of it or not, today we're up against what's called religious persecution. Do they kill us? No. Will they assassinate your character? Absolutely. So Romans 8, 35 and 7 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, hardships, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or the sword. As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. 
No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You won't know that unless you spend time in the tent. Because when that battle shows up, when you are attacked, you'll want to attack back. Ask me how I know. The Bible tells me so, but I've done it personally. You will attack. The third thing, loneliness and anxiety. Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy burden. If you've ever been lonely, it is heavy. It's a burden. If you've ever been in that place, it's not a fun place to be. And Jesus said, you can come to me. Take my yoke upon you he says i'll give you rest and learn from me again there's the general's tent go learn about christ go spend time with him it's okay to listen to ministers and to others but go spend personal time with jesus christ i am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest in your souls. Our world needs people's souls to be at rest. We are troubled today. I am heartbroken as a retired educator. I am heartbroken at our young folks that are suffering from depression and, and so many other, their soul is so broke apart. And you and I are the solution through Christ Jesus. We are the light and the hope of the world. You are chosen. God called your name. He didn't call my name when he called you. He called your name. Like Samuel of old, he woke you up. Some of you got woke up. Some of you were like Mary Magdalene. If you were like me, you were... She had seven demons. I don't know how many I had when God called me. But when he calls your name, he breaks it. He pulls you out. He takes you to a different place, a place of peace and rest and comfort and wholeness. Can we beat anxiety? Can we beat depression? I went through almost four years of clinical depression. It's the worst place you'll ever want to be. You fall into a dark hole and you think you're never coming out. God has promised. God has promised. He who created you and me and called our names, that's why you're sitting here. God called you personally. He has promised that he'll set us free. He did it to the Israelites. He did it to Mary Magdalene. She became an evangelist. Can you imagine? She never gave up on Jesus. She went to the grave. There she was. The rest of them locked up in a room hiding. Of course, not that us males would ever do something like that. Oh, okay. Thank God for women. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Last one I want to close with is loneliness and anxiety. Anxious anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. That's in Proverbs 12, 25. You will not find a kind heart unless you find another Christian. <laughs> I promise. Don't go to your friends. Go to people just like you that have spent time in the tent and they will give you a kind heart. You will see the clouds. They'll see the sunshine for you until the sunshine comes through. That's what a true friend will do for you. They'll carry you like Christ had carried them. They're only giving. It's called pay it forward. They're only doing for you what you've done for others. And if it's done for you, guess what? We get to do it for somebody else. Philippians 4, 8 says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, 
Well, there's a, <laughs> we got to fix our thoughts on what's true. Can't find it unless you go in the general's tent. What's honorable? Can't find it unless you go in the general's tent. And right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Can you imagine people criticizing you because you're too happy and having such a good time? It'll happen. As the mayor of our small city, when I pray for each of our staff almost every day, there are some people that get very upset about that. Very upset. And I don't think it's them. I think it's the snake that has influenced them. I think it's evil has gotten on to people. And those people are worth saving. Because God says they're mine. And he's, he's even calling them if they'll answer. So God has not given us a spirit of fear. So it's without a spirit of fear, you know, we can be quiet. And we can remember, like the book of Psalms, David said, remember who God is and what God has done for you. If you can remember, excuse me, if I remember who God is and what he's done for me, I'm happier than a pig in slop. I really am. And the world looks better. And people that cut me off don't bother me quite so bad. And I can say, except for the grace of God, there I am. Or let me put it this way. There I am, except, period, for the grace of God. There I go. That's me. Remind ourselves that the character and attributes of God. Remember the general's tent? That's what I want to, I'm going to close with this, and then I'm going to ask Pastor and my wife to sing a quick song for you. Remind ourselves that the character and attributes of God are similar to fastening your seatbelt. Spiritually speaking, it's not a big deal until you need it, and then it saves your life. Being in the general's tent is the best time you'll ever spend in your whole life, even if it's just sitting there for 10 minutes, looking at the ceiling, not knowing what to say. God is faithful. Pastor Catherine? probably know this song that uh, oh. Dale wanted us to share together. You ready? Yes. All right. The, the joy, joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. If you want joy, you must sing, sing song, song, sing. Wait, now. <laughs> Yeah. You can well, sing let's for it. You ask for it, pray for it, then sing for it, okay? okay. If you want joy, you, you must ask, ask for it. it. If you want joy, you must ask for it. If you want joy, you can ask for it. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Sing now. If you want joy, you must sing for it. If you want joy, you can sing for it. If you want joy, you must sing for it. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. If you want joy, you must pray for it. If you want joy, you can pray for it. If you want joy, you must pray for it. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Beautiful. And oh, well, with, 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 with that song, I want you to remember... It's silly. You know why? It's childlike. 
And Christ said, we can't get there unless we become like a child. We've got to go back to being children, young men and young women, and people like me, seniors. We've got to go back to just being in awe in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Is it on now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> I apologize for that. My goodness. Every time I sit down, I, where I have it put there, I just I, I push against it with my coat. So I apologize for that. Holy Communion is open to all our dear folks. And that's the way we're going to close out our service today. I don't know if all the children are already back in. Are they at the time? I know they're going to be bringing them in a minute. So we'll wait a moment. But I, I have to explain to you how Communion is going to be served today. Uh, in our process today, uh, we did this last month, so if you were here, you'll remember that, but uh, maybe some of you were not, and uh, at 8 o'clock um, this morning and at the next service, this will be the very first time that they come forward to receive the sacrament uh, in over two years. So that's amazing. So if you were not here, our ushers, Brother David, will lead them. We'll be bringing you up in a minute. We're going to start with our side pews, and they're going to come down the center aisles here and then uh, go to the altar if you want to kneel for a moment or stand at the altar. And uh, Jennifer and Justin are going to be holding the plates. If you need the gluten-free bread, it's right in the center. You just need to mention that to them, and they'll reach back and get that for you. And that's in a self-contained container uh, as well. And there's always some folks that need that. So we have it right here for you. Now, all of our men, because of our men's retreat, even if you were not here over the weekend, that doesn't make any difference at all. We're going to have four men, two on each side behind the altar. So when you receive the sacrament, we just want you to keep it in your hands. And if you don't mind, go and stand for a moment at the altar. If you'd like to kneel, you're welcome to. And one of the men that's behind there is just going to anoint your forehead with oil with a cross and say a brief prayer over you as a man of God, a man that is courageous, moving forward, stepping up, stepping out, a blessing. There's something about a blessing. As Dale said, there's something about a praying church that just does something uh, for us. You ladies that are with the guys, I mean, everybody's welcome to kneel if you'd like to be prayed over. But those that are with the men, if you wouldn't mind, just stand behind them a minute, place your hands on them, and, and just as they're being prayed for. It's just going to be beautiful. And then move back to your seat. And we'll just constantly move. Brother David and the ushers will have them coming forward. Uh, the kids will be able to eat with the, uh, their families the simple meal of the sacrament uh, as well. In the Methodist tradition, always, even in our new global Methodist movement, communion is open to everyone. Even if you're not a member, that doesn't matter. Different ages, we leave that up to the parents. That's completely up to you. Uh, if, if, if you're uncomfortable with your child receiving the sacrament, that's okay. And whatever you are comfortable with, because this is an experience in Jesus. It's between you and Jesus. It's Jesus that has forgiven our sins. And he is the second part of the Trinity. Remember, the Father, Son, as Brother Dale said, Holy Ghost. We sometimes call him the Holy Spirit. And so to begin, always our tradition in the service, we share the Apostles' Creed. This creed goes way back to the early church, and it is a synopsis of what we believe about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Can we have that on the screen, please? And let's share it together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in His Son, Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this service, we always explain that in that ancient creed, it says we believe in the Holy Catholic Church, and we always make it clear that that is not the denomination. Maybe some of you came from the Roman Catholic Church, and we honor them, but that's not what this passage means. It's the word Catholic. It's just the traditional words that means universal. People of all around the world that love Jesus are welcome at the Lord's table. Can we all say amen? Amen. I'm going to ask those that are going to serve communion if they'll go ahead and come forward, if our ushers will get ready. I think our children are coming in that uh, went to Sunday school. And so if you will just wait, we're going to come from the sides first. Let the usher guide you. You're going to come around the center aisles. And if anybody is here that can't come forward, we'll take the communion to you. We want, we want everybody to receive it. And if you can't come forward and want to be anointed, we will take the anointing to you. We, we will do that, okay? So, But we're going to begin uh, with the side items there. And as the children come in, uh, David and our ushers, if you'll direct them forward to come around. Uh, however you want to have them. I would just leave them, I wouldn't pick up the whole thing, Justin, Jennifer, I'd just take the top tray, and then you can switch it there. Yeah, you're a muscle man. I know, oh, listen at you. Here's our gluten-free. Let us pray as we are getting ready to come forward. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that are gathered here now as we receive the sacrament. This is always a beautiful, precious time. The Methodist tradition is one Sunday a month, the first Sunday, May the 1st. Father, and we come asking that you forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we pray that the Holy Spirit would guide us and lead us and direct us as only you can. In Jesus' most precious name. Amen and amen. We're going to ask this whole side if y'all will come and follow Brother Don, if you'll just come on around and then receive the sacrament. Men, if you'll come to the altar with the anointing oil. There'll be two men behind each altar. Got Mike and make sure you have the oil. Is there, you have, each of you have the oil? We have the cleansers there for your hands as well. We want to form two aisles, not one, two aisles coming down if we can. So if you're on this side of the church, if you'll be, there you go. That's perfect. Just brief prayers, if you will, guys, and move to the next, if you will. There we go. Praise the Lord. Communion is open to all, everyone, everyone. Folks, y'all can move on down the sides of the altar. We're just saying brief prayers, brief prayers and sides of the altar. There you go. Everyone takes the cup, the chalice, back to your seats, and we will take it all together. We'll receive the sacrament together.
welcome when you take the cup to return to your seats. The side altars are open as well. We're offering just a prayer of blessing, brief prayers of blessings. If you have not been served and would like us to take communion or the anointing oil to us, if you will raise your hand. I think all have been, you see someone? <laughs> Are there any others? We want to make sure all have been served. like the anointing oil brought to them we'd ask our anointers to anoint each other when they're finished as well for a moment isn't that a beautiful way to close out the service amen if you'll take your cup as they're finishing up at the altar if y'all don't have cups y'all need to get you a cup right up front here Heavenly Father, we thank you for your kindness and grace. We thank you for your sweet spirit that is in this place. We ask, Lord, that you be with us through the anointing, through this sacrament, that you forgive us of our sins. The Bible says on the night before Christ was crucified, he took the bread. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body broken for you. Take and eat and remember me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, offered it to his disciples and said, Take ye and drink ye all of this, and remember that my life is being poured out for you. In Christ's name we pray, amen. If you'll take your cup, and if you'll uncover the bread first, represents Jesus, the body of Christ, his teachings, everything we know about Jesus. The body represents, take and eat and remember him. After supper, Jesus took the cup. This represents his death, the blood flow, where he was drained of his humanity and died for our sins. Take and drink and remember the Lord. May we share the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. 
There are receptacles when you depart in just a moment at the door that you can drop your communion cup in. The offering plates are there. If you have a prayer concern, you can put it in there. And we are so thankful for your offerings that you give to us. On the first Sunday of the month, some people like to give to our discretionary fund that takes care of the needs of our community. And if you'd like to do that, it needs to be earmarked that way. Thank you for giving to the church. What a blessing that is. And as Dale said, there's so many opportunities in the narthex for you to pray with the prayer bears, the prayer quilt, and the prayer wall. May we all rise together for our closing. All the children to come on up. We're going to do a song that we want you to be involved with us. Any of our young folks, you can show us how to sing and dance. You want to come up here for the closing? There you go, Dominic. There you go. He's got the theme. Right up here.
Heavenly Father, we believe totally in you and you alone. Father, we thank you for this service. We thank you for the message. Father, continue to bless Brother Dale and his entire family. Father, the message was powerful today. Father, we take home a little more than what we came with. And Father, as we come to the closing of this service, help us to put on the whole armor of God until we meet again. May all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. And turn around and greet your neighbor. We'll see you next Sunday morning. Ooh.